Hi everybody, this is another one of these podcast style videos where I will talk about things completely spontaneously. I will just choose a subject that I think it's interesting for us to explore and uh, I will waste a little bit of your time but you will think, you will see my thought process and I'm pretty sure uh, I will I will be saying stuff that I wouldn't if, if I structured everything nicely and stuff that's probably important and then I would skip that might be interesting for you and for me, because I'm using these videos to kind of brainstorm about different different things and think them through. What I want to talk about today is uh, this software development, because we as computational designers um, and architects, uh, which I assume you're interested in if you follow this channel, uh, <clears throat> we develop a lot of software. And uh, there is this basic distinction when you do this. Are you, uh, what is your business based on? Is it based on creating a product or is it based on providing a service? That's the very main distinction. And um, a lot of us are much more concentrated uh, in the, uh, on the service part, and I definitely am. But you can notice that a lot of people uh, that are in this area are trying to create a product, trying to create a software, uh, software solution that they will then sell either usually uh, on some subscription basis and so on, but uh, we're not going to go into that. We're going to stay, we're going to talk about this subject of software creation and how AI influences that. And uh, the main thing that uh, bothers me is that developing software is becoming much more stressful. And the reason is that uh, once we started with globalization seriously, with the invention of internet, we slowly moved into this winner-take-all e economy, right? Because suddenly, whatever you are producing, you were competing with the whole world. And then, and then you could see that in, in all industries. Of course, if you were making movies, you could see that the top 10 movies were watched by the entire world, right? They gathered mil billions of dollars. And all other movies just f fought for the cr uh, crumbles. And that's kind of, um, that's kind of grew into this techno feudalism where you have a um, couple of companies that rule the world and all others are merging. And uh, software is not different, of course. So you have, I don't know, Autodesk and uh, that, that has the largest share, large share of the market. And there's a couple of other big players. There is always room for, let's say, couple of them, not necessarily only one, because they diverge in, in what they do and how they do it. But the, the pool is very small of, of those at the top, and then everybody else fights for these crumbs. The problem with that is that uh, I think with AI, that's going to get even worse. So it's not only going to be winner takes all, it's going, I feel it's going to be winner takes all, but that winner can crumble and disappear within a month and then a new winner will come that will take all because a new AI model comes, new software that can do something or new AGI that can take over. So um, software developers are under a lot of stress when they're developing, uh, especially in this AI space, because they have no idea if this the net next chat GPT, if the net deep seek or the, if the next new model they don't know about will come out next week and simply run over what they're doing, like be able to do the same thing. And um, it's getting harder and harder to do something that AI can't because uh, the, it, it can code and create more and more complex systems. So it's not unimaginable for you to tell sometime soon, to tell to AI to create entire software that's like Revit or like Archicad from scratch. If you have a good model, a good combination of models or whatever, maybe that's possible. So that begs the question then what are we going to do as software developers that offer products so i'm going to give you my opinion in on this and what my instinct is um and uh, not necessarily as an advice but just as how i feel i feel that we have to slowly give up on creating software as products so anyway anyway i feel there is a lot of lot of lot of double work done that's necessary. And I know that's the basis of capitalism, that the competition creates innovation. But we have to find some middle solution uh, 
so that we don't keep developing the same thing 100, 100 times and then waste a lot of time. I think we have to go more into kind of an open source solutions uh, so that we converge on a couple of software that we can all use and keep developing them. The problem is that then no one can profit from those software because if people are profiting from those software, that will automatically create competition. So they have to be kind of free and open source. Uh, but the problem becomes from the but the problem comes from the nature of open source um, because I personally don't do a lot of open sourcing because and and programming for free because I don't think that's the right way, at least for me. Uh, I I do want to have some reward. I get, gathered a lot of experience. I gathered a lot of, lot of knowledge on my on, on, on my journey of 20 years of computational design, and I don't want to give it away for free, right? I still have to pay rent. I have to put my kids to school. I do want to have a nice standard of, of living. So I don't find it fair that some of us just simply use hours and hours and hours of, of our time to do something and, and code something and give it for free when we have so so little time and so that's another aspect of this whole story that confuses me that i feel that it should go into this direction of, of open software similar uh, to, to the similar approach let's say that the blender took uh, blender is open source and there's so many people contributing and it rose so much starting to do everything that other software can do uh, and I think that's the right direction. The problem is how how to how to uh, how to do it. I don't have any solutions yet, but my instinct says that we should slowly give up on these products, slowly give up on selling products, and try to make them free and open source. That's my instinct. I know it's complicated, and I know it's not fair to say, especially to people who bet their entire career of creating a product that they can uh, sell. It's not fair because I am service oriented, so I am kind of pushing toward you now pulling toward the service side. But I'm not service oriented by accident. I always had this instinct that it's that it's incredibly hard to compete in the product uh, sector because of the globalization, and that it's almost Im impossible to do that and not great for our mental health because then you're stressed. As I said, if next week someone is going to appear and make your product obsolete. So I think that for our mental health and for the future, it would be better if we, all of us, got more into the service direction because there you can offer some unique services and you can have a unique set of skills that distinguishes you from the others in what you do and how you do. And uh, Software itself as a product then is not something I will be developing soon to sell because I will be afraid of that. And uh, I am developing some software. Maybe you're aware, maybe you're not. For example, there is this gas plugin that I'm doing now and I'm probably going to be uh, giving it away for free. But here's my plan. My plan is to give it away for free, but maybe keep some of the things that, that are completely unique to my way of working and to, and to way... Uh, we structure our work based on what we're doing. We are, sometimes we are working on the design, we are using Rhino inside to help architects create this system of automated creation of digital twins. Sometimes we work for facade fabricator, fabricators where we uh, prepare everything for production and so on. So we have this system and our workflow. And my instinct is that if you're dealing with computational design and software development, that you should think like I'm doing how to move that into the service sector, how to use the software you're creating to produce something that's useful in the real world. And if you are actually creating software as a product, I really, I really hope you succeed. I wish you all the luck and all the best, but I think I'm not going to do that. And that's maybe the, the main takeaway from, from this video, if it means anything to you, because I have a lot of experience in this area. So maybe my opinion is, is, uh, has some weight. I will not be doing that because, um, because the AI is progressing so fast. Nowadays, I am using AI. We are all using AI uh, to help us code. We are copy-pasting a lot of it. We are using it to create systems. And in recent videos, I showed 
how you can use AI to create functions on the fly that are then immediately run and executed inside, inside the software. And that will get better and better. And the question is, what software are you going to make and put hours and weeks and years into making that the next AI model maybe will generate from a single prompt? And if you are ready to deal with that kind of mental stress and that kind of risk, I congratulate you, but I don't think that's the right way. If I imagine our civilization or our profession five to ten years from now, it feels good if I imagine software that's like Blender or uh, like Rhino in the sense that it gives you very, very fundamental base, like an amazing geometry engine that you can build, build on top on. But then everything that we build on top of that is... Uh, is open source and free. And the good thing is that uh, usually most of that code will be generated by AI. So we won't have to do this trade-off. We, have, we don't have to do, deal with this moral di di dilemma. If I'm not a good person, maybe if I'm not giving my software for free or giving it for open source, why do I want to be paid and so on? Um, so in that sense, it's we will be freed from that dilemma and we will be using AI to enhance this software every day from all sides to do what we want to do and to do for it to be beneficial for all because most of us are dealing with the same problems and having the same problems and we just keep repeating the same code with, within some offices doing the same thing and wasting time. And then if the economy is going to collapse because of AI or no, no, nobody knows that. But I have this feeling that if it's going to stand still on its legs, then it will stand on this uh, creation of unique type of services that we can uh, do to combine our particular skills and use one software uh, altogether. Now, I don't want to make this video too long because I already kind of had one or two points, and then I repeated them 10 times. I'm aware of that. And that's um, kind of the main characteristics of these kind of podcast videos. But I think it's important. I think that you, when you say something once, it just goes through and it, you don't really uh, comprehend it. And so I like to repeat things a couple of times, even it, if, it, if, it, it, if it does waste your time a little bit. But I would be... Uh, but. I would wonder what you think about it because it's a very, very touchy subject and it's um, we are every day witnessing this news about AI and how AI is pro progressing and we are aware that things cannot stay the same. But I think people are ignoring that and even if they're aware of that, they're acting every day as if things they are staying the same and they're doing what they're doing because they're comfortable with it and it's hard to change and hard to pivot and so on. But I think that a lot of us will have to pivot in some direction. And uh, I will not have to pivot a lot because I was surface-oriented from the start. But I had a lot of ideas about developing software, selling software. And the action that I took based on the events and the AI advancement is that I'm not advancing those. I'm not putting my bets on developing software products that I can sell anymore because I think that's a, that's a very hard endeavor. I will end here and I would like to know what you think about it. Subscribe, uh, follow and uh, go to gasworld.com where I will publish that gas software that we talked about at some point. And you will have find a, a 10 hour plus Rhino developer C sharp course that you can use to develop your own code and develop your own systems. And then we'll have to see what happens in the near future. Thanks. Stay free.